news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyons News. I'm Rachel Matta reporting for Canyons News. An ongoing pandemic isn't the only challenge people are facing in 2021. Residents of Santa Clarita are now concerned about their cars. Samantha Bailey has more on the story. In a year full of obstacles, Santa Clarita has faced a worrying trend. According to the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Department, 2020 has seen a 400% increase in catalytic converter thefts in Los Angeles County. Neil Kakia, who owns Canyon Muffler and Smog in Canyon Country, has seen many cars affected by the thefts. In the last three months, um, we had in our shop over 70 or 80 stolen cats. According to COC's Public Information Office, the catalytic converters are valuable because they contain precious metals. Dave Reeves of Reeves Complete Auto Repair and Service Center in Santa Clarita says the Toyota Prius is a common target for theft because the location of the cat makes it easy to remove. 45 seconds, that thing's out and gone, and nobody ever knows until you start it up. Replacing a stolen catalytic converter can be a big expense. I'd say the average is probably 16, 17 bucks a piece. You may be left wondering how you can prevent this type of theft. Kike says his shop offers services to help deter thieves looking to make a quick buck. Uh, for the trucks, we have a zinc uh, chain welded from the cat to the, to the frame. For the Prius, we offer the shield, and also that will prevent and make it very harder to steal the cats. Reeves adds that getting your license plate number and the sheriff's logo etched onto your catalytic converter can be an effective safety measure. If a thief is going to look under a car and he sees a license plate and a big sheriff logo on that cat, he's bailing. Authorities say it's best to park in areas that are well lit and have surveillance cameras. With Canyons News, I'm Samantha Bailey. Coronavirus vaccine efforts are expanding across Santa Clarita. Clarissa Serrano has more on the story. With vaccination distribution efforts receiving their initial doses of COVID-19 vaccines in December, thousands of tests are being distributed every day across the country. Magic Mountain is one of five established centers in Los Angeles County supplying vaccinations for eligible community members. The Magic Mountain vaccine site plans to administer over 4,000 vaccinations per day with the most at-risk citizens being prioritized. Large-scale vaccination sites aim to vaccinate 500,000 Los Angeles County residents in a single month. I want to make sure everybody goes to the, our website to sign up for uh, an appointment to get vaccinated. There, they're going to be asked uh, a series of questions to make sure they are qualified to receive the vaccine at this time. Uh, if you are not qualified or are not a healthcare worker right now, uh, and essentially uh, decide to uh, make an appointment, you'll be taking a space away from somebody that actually needs it and you'll be turned away. Uh, we wanna make sure that we, we get the people that are at most risk first and then continue all the way down. The site offers all variations of the vaccine and each individual will be funneled through different sites depending on the test they receive. From there, they must go online to register for their second dose where they will be directed to where their dose will be offered. Vaccinations at Magic Mountain, as well as the other four large-scale sites, are free and available to everyone regardless of immigration status or insurance coverage. As vaccines stay on the minds of our community, many businesses are wondering if COVID restrictions are going to continue lifting or continue putting them in stressful situations. More on the story of a barbershop's journey with shutdowns and lifted restrictions is Destiny De La Cueva has caused many local businesses to shut down or limit its capacity. And for Shannon, the manager of the Great American Barbershop, the new regulations came with a new reality. She had a significant loss in business. I was only able to have one person in my shop working at a time, so which limited us to only an eight hour day due to California regulations with payroll as well. So we probably lost about half of our business in the beginning. Throughout the pandemic, the shop has faced several challenges trying to cope with the new regulations that included allowing businesses to only run outside. The end of June, we had to be outside. And by then, I think the temperatures were reaching 90 to 100 degrees outside. We had to be, so we had to go in the back because we, 
our shopping center did not allow us to be in the front where it's shaded. So we had to get canopies for the back, water systems, which made things a little difficult between the sweat and the water dripping on the customers and the hair sticking to the customer. The barbershop is not new to the reopening process during the pandemic and with local residents feeling more comfortable to step outside, there is hope that this opening will be the last. It makes me nervous. Um, we've been through this. I, this is the fourth opening we've had due to COVID. Makes me kind of nervous with everybody getting back opened. I just, I'm sure I hope the public behaves <laughs> and we can stay open and it doesn't go backwards again. With the worst of the pandemic behind us, Shannon sends other barbershops a hopeful message. Let's all stick together, do what we need to do. Make sure your sanitation is on point. That's what's gonna keep us in business. With Canyon's news, I'm Destiny Delagoda. With increasing vaccinations and decreased coronavirus cases, Los Angeles County has officially moved into the red tier, allowing for resumed indoor dining. Havana Savannah is a local coffee house that first opened its doors amid the pandemic in July, exclusively focusing on drive through and takeout orders due to social distancing procedures. This week marks the first time Havana Savannah is allowing indoor dining, finally fulfilling the business's goal of being a second home for the Santa Clarita community. It's really weird because when we first opened, we weren't allowed to have our lobby open. But now that it is, it's really nice to see the community come together and everybody talk and you know, enjoy their coffee. Opening its doors for the first time has not only been a positive sight to see, but also has positively impacted business both inside the lobby and in the drive-thru. Yeah, I mean, I would say there's more people coming into the lobby and um, you know, it's just a little bit busier overall, yeah. Despite countless hardships for businesses during the coronavirus pandemic, Havana Savannah serves as an example of a business that has grown its success during a time where businesses have every reason to fail. With 2020 marking the first year in more than a generation that vinyl record sales have surpassed CD sales, three local residents have found an interesting way to share this form of music with the people of Santa Clarita. What started out as three friends selling some of their unwanted vinyl records has now turned into three guys vinyl. And you're on your email. Yep. Okay, wonderful. A community where Santa Clarita residents can go to buy, sell, and chat about this resurging form of physical music. We began doing this about four and a half years ago. We began with about three boxes of records. Two people came by. One person was looking for a used turntable, which we didn't have. The other guy bought $153 worth of records. So we looked at each other at the end of the day, and we said, huh, let's do this again. It started increasing. Yeah, that's the Nostra album, and I tried to get by it, but this was a while back. It's, 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 it's mushroomed into this. this. And we began to fill up the garage so I couldn't park my car in there anymore. And now we have about 7,000 records. It's a lot. Um, One of the main draws to this community is the interaction between those who share a common interest. Well, it's just social for me. I dig talking to people, whether it's a younger person who's never heard of the Beatles or the Beach Boys. And then we have a lot of people that are a little older who have gotten rid of all of their records. And now they want to rebuy their collection. Uh, well, com the camaraderie, you know, great to uh, talk to people, great to uh, uh, have a shared common interest with people. Um, I love the, I love flipping through the records. I love the tactile experience, like looking through records and saying, wow, that's a great record. I enjoy seeing people be uh, fulfilled in that way and learning. They learn about new music. You can they believe that vinyl is the best way to listen to music, and they'll even prove it to you. Well, it sounds so much better than anything else. Also, what's cool about a vinyl record is you take it out of the sleeve, you can bite it, you can taste it, you can feel it. You put it on the platter, you put the needle down, you sit down and you listen intently. Vinyl, it's a very, very different listening experience. And I challenge anybody, you bring me a CD or an MP3 file, we go into the house, I'll play the, 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 the record of that same thing you brought, your jaw will hit the ground and you'll go, oh my gosh, this is what I've been missing.
Visit Three Guys Vinyl Records on Facebook for more information and also join their mailing list for updates on future events. This has been Anthony Nubiel reporting for Canyons News. Once again, reporting for Canyons News, I'm Rachel Matta. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.